high of my victory yesterday, my fins, and be able to like settle into this is going to be at least a passable season and not an epic disaster, a letdown. Coming out of the gates with the win doesn't assure anything for my Dolphins, but it's a must-needed start. So I was all geeked up and excited, did my podcast in fan mode. I was sort of happy with it and sort of not, you know, going back and watching the film uh, and really dialing into what really went down rather than me just being excited. I don't think I was too off. I was a little, little bit all over the place because I was excited. My son even got up this morning and, and watched the podcast and saw him get men- mentioned with the waddle dance, and he was still pumped up. So that felt good. But that's the last one I'm going to do for the season because really my job is not to be a fan for you guys. It's to bring good information. It's to be level-headed, to be conservative, and try to have the best batting average for good information and a good evaluation. So... I'm going to do a podcast today based on where the AFC East is. And I had to make some tough decisions and really get down to being logical and evaluating fairly rather than being Mr. Fan, geeked up fan. So I'm going to really set the tone for what we saw. It's going to be based on context because my evaluations are based on what we've seen, but What we've seen is based on who each team played. So if you played a poor defensive line and you had a million yards rushing, it's a lot different than if you played the number one rushing defense and you did okay. So with that in mind, I'm going to evaluate the critical position groups and then kind of put the pole position of where the teams are. And this is going to change. And it's my evaluation, and I do... I was vacillating back and forth, so I'm going to be interested to hear what you guys think. I'm not putting my foot down in the ground on all these things because I really did have a tough time on some of them. So my hierarchy of positional groups, I'm going to dismiss some actually, and I'll explain why. But it's going to be first offensive line, then QB, then defensive line, then defensive backs, and then wide receivers. Tight ends, they are a critical position, but there's no super elite tight ends. Hunter over with the Pats, he's pretty good, but he's not really a game changer. And so none of the tight end groups was so overwhelmingly good that I I really focused on him. And running backs, there's some good running backs. If you if you if you get a chance, watch Michael Carter with the Jets. This guy has some real magic. I mean, I don't know if he can handle a heavy workload because of his size, but when you watch this guy run and work in little space and be able to make guys miss and get those extra yards, he can catch and run. The guy was such a steal in the fourth round. He's such a fun view. I like him. Singletary, I like. Motor, I like a lot. He can catch. He can run. He's very good. Uh, like Carter. Both of them I put at the top of the list because they are so diverse and it's a passing league. And so the pl- pass-catching aspect is critical. Neither of these guys are, are game breakers, but they are very good. And then Ramadre Stevenson, I think this guy has the highest upside, but because of his style, he really needs an offensive line and an offense to kind of let him get himself going. And we haven't really seen that yet, but I really, really like him. And then Damian Harris, I really, really like. Now Edmonds, he's got talent, but you know, you see, you look at all the other backs in the league, uh, you know, they're pedestrian, you know, not necessary talent, but production. So I really didn't factor in the running backs because almost all, I mean, all these running backs are based on the run game, uh, opening up, being opened up through holes to the offensive line. So the offensive line was paramount. And then linebacker, there's no real, I think Milano is probably the best in the league and he does play a, a good factor. But none of these linebacking groups are changing anything, really. You know, the no game changes, although Milano is really, really good. So those are going to be the five position groups that I'm going to focus on and then do a harky first, second, third, and fourth. And at the end, kind of put where these teams are at. 
I think it's pretty clear right now what we see. I think the more interesting aspect is these position groups. Now, before I get into that, I'm going to do my usual saying thank you guys. Even for listening to me do my fan rant, you guys have been very kind uh, showing up here with the likes, the subscribes, and the views, and I really appreciate that, man. It, it, it's awesome seeing so many great people, supportive people. You know, whether I'm doing good or screwing up, some really great people come by. So I appreciate all that. Also, want to give a shout out to Ace Per Head, my sponsors, because without you guys and without them, this show ain't going down. Ace Per Head's betting software is the premier white label platform for bookies to manage their players and grow their sportsbook operation. Click the link in the description below to get set up in minutes. Ask for the Curtis promo and get a special and deductory discount. So, I'm an offensive line guy. I, oh, I believe firmly offensive line is the key to all victories. You get time of possession, it even helps the defense. So your offensive line, for the most part, doesn't have to be the best, but it does play a critical role. Now, don't get upset because I'm telling you what I feel. In my hierarchy of what I believe the offensive lines are, from what I've seen week one, this can change. Injuries, players stepping up. This is just based on week one from what we've seen. I got the Bills, the Jets, the Patriots, and in last place, the Dolphins. Now, to me, Bills, they just got a lot of talent and then a lot of depth. They went against an excellent front and it had some struggles because Aaron Donald's going to do that to anybody but they were able to get the ball running they were able to protect pretty well and ultimately dominate the Rams and that says a lot I mean Dawkins he's really good and he looks like he's going to have a better season than he did last year and then you got Saffold who has just been great great and great sometimes struggles in the past game but Next to Dawkins, that's unbelievable. And then you got Morse at center, who's a quality center. And then you got Bates, who that's my question mark. But you got Van Rotten back there. You got Cuisenberry, which is great depth. Maybe if things don't work out, to bring him in there, whatever. And then you got Brown, the young guy with a giant chin, who's really shown a lot. Not a perfect offensive line, but a deep and some high points of talent, which I think surpasses other teams. Although the Jets, they have a really good... I mean, if you haven't watched the Jets play the Ravens with Flacco, they were very feisty, and this team looks like they're building a very good foundation and starting with the offensive line. Now, it's going to come down to what this quarterback can do, and that's a big question mark because all the nice things that I'm seeing, it's not going to matter without the quarterback. But this offensive line for the Jets... You got Fant, Tomlinson, McGovern, Herbig, and Vera Tucker, and Embecton in the background. And this is a really good group. Not great, but you can see Ravens are no joke when it comes to run stop. And Carter, who is an excellent back, like I said, was able to find holes. And, you know, this offense is going to be based on like the Shanahan system of moving play actions. And you can't really do that with Flacco. You just can't. So they were kind of handcuffed in a lot of ways, but they still were passable. They look very good. And I think that if, if Becton can ever get himself healthy, adding to the rest of this unit, they could actually supplant the Bills as the best offensive line. But becton has got to play. I mean, it's just a big pick to not see him year after year. So I really like them. And then the Patriots. The Patriots have a lot of potential too. But Strange struggled a little bit. Brown at left tackle. He struggled a little bit this week. To me, Andrews and Anwenu are the two best offensive linemen in this division with my man Tehran at left tackle. But his injury history, you have to really pull that down a lot because consistency is key. Now, Andrews has had his injury shares, but not to the same level and Anwenu is probably the best offensive lineman in this division healthy huge able to play tackle able to play guard just an unbelievable player when he's solid he could be good but he gets beat and he does have injuries as well so I really like Patriots what they got going here strange is going to be the big thing 
but I couldn't put them over the Jets, couldn't put them over the Bills. Now, my Dolphins, I know my, some of my Dolphin fans are freaking out and tearing their hair out, but I went back and I watched that game yesterday. And to McDaniels, uh, to McDan- McDaniels, McDaniel, yeah, McDaniels possessive, <laughs> confusing me, credit, he called a very good game to hide some of these weaknesses. A lot of that play action, a lot of that movement, really gave them the extra edge to block. Now, my concern is teams are not going to buy the run game unless you can actually sell them a real run game. And I think it's this is going to be diminishing returns, this stuff, unless we can get a running game going. Teron played excellent. And Connor Williams, some snap issues. I saw one really bad one to start the game, and I didn't really notice the rest. I got to pay more attention to that. But there was a few off ones, but not terrible, terrible, terrible. But he had a good game, some little issues here and there. But for the most part, best scent that we've seen here since Pouncey. And uh, so, you know, you got those two guys. Hunt, he's got potential, but he really suffers. I've been saying this for a while, and I think some of my Finn fans have to, should remember this. And you go back to the 2020 Bills game, he gets lost, and he loses location and he, his vision narrows a little too much, and he gets beat on stunts, sometimes quick moves to the outside. And this is why him playing tackles are no-go right at this stage. So he had some good stuff in there, some good run blocks, some good pass blocks, but there was a few gaffes. Jackson, no good. No good. But the worst part for my Dolphins, uh, well, Little played actually much better, and I'm ha- I pr- much prefer him there. But the very concerning part is Eichenberg. He was a disaster. He was actually worse than Jackson. He got beat in the run game. He got beat in the pass game. He would run past guys on poles. He had a few plays here and there. It's not like, you know, total. But that hole there, the little inconsistency at Hunt, the injury issue at Tehran, and then what are we going to do at right tackle really puts... This offensive line, in my opinion, in last place. Things can change, guys can develop, and all this other stuff. But from what I saw, this is how I have it. And that's the most critical unit, okay? Now, over these other units are very big and can pick it up. So QB, I'm not even going to spend too much time on this. Allen's the best quarterback in this division by a landslide. Anybody who says other than that is high on lots of peyote, or just, you know, you'd be fanning out. You're like, screw it. I get that now. After my day yesterday as a fan, I, I re-remembered what it's like to be a fan. So I, I understand a lot more now. But clearly, Allen is on a whole nother level. Move on. Now, this second and third place, I know, someone had a great comment. He's like, if you weren't a Dolphin fan and you got rid of all this, all this extraneous stuff, who would you say is better to run a franchise, Mac or Tua, after what you saw yesterday? And I thought that was a great comment. I know people say, Mac sucks. Go back and watch the tape. You know, he, he's in his second year. He has to win on the mental side. And he had some gaffes. He had some nice throws. He missed some throws. He was injured. He had some good control on the line of scrimmage. But to me, when you go back, uh, uh, he was let down by the offensive coordinator on a lot of plays. Didn't really like the design as much. To me, I thought it was going to be like a, Patricia was going to be like a step, maybe two down and McDaniel. But I think it's even more than that because I, with McDaniels in there, you'd always get that critical screen play. You'd always get that nice rub play combo inside to get that first. It wasn't available yesterday. The, the offensive line let him down more than him and uh, Patricia let him down more than him. But I still will have to edge him out. Because while Tua makes the bonehead gaffes here and there, those movement skills and his quick release, given the receivers he has and the style he runs, is a huge asset. If Mac had Tua's movement skills, a lot of the issues you saw yesterday would have been different. But he's very immobile. He can get out there and do some stuff, but it's not fast twitch. You know what I'm saying? He's not fast twitch. So if a guy comes in, he's not getting away. Where two, you could see, he'll do the spin move, he'll boot out, and he has enough 
to get out there. And to me, that's a big edge along with the quick release. And, you know, he's in his third year too, so he should have that edge. Do I think Tua doesn't have things to grow on? Yes. Do I think Mac has things to grow on? Yes. I can see both these guys being successful as they mature. Some guys take time. Even Allen, who is unbelievable. It was his third season before he broke out, and he had an excellent framework. Now, Mac, you're seeing his framework's breaking down. It wasn't as good as last year. And Tua had a terrible framework year one and year two, and he's got a better framework now, but this offensive line can't give him a run game. If Tua had a run game to complement his pass game, a lot of things would look different. And, and Mac has had that. So for me, it's Allen, strong first, then Tua, and then behind him, Mac. But I still see, I can see Mac getting up there, but just not there yet. You know, and this back injury thing, whatever that is, is going to be a big drain. And then Zach Wilson at the bottom. You know, he's injured. He's coming in week four. We didn't see a lot of him last year. So I think it's pretty clear on that. Now, defensive line. This is where it starts getting a little murky. Now, I love the Dolphins' defensive line. I think they've got a lot going for them. But Von Miller, oh my. Von Miller, and then you got Oliver, and then you got Rousseau, then you got Daquan, then you got Phillips, and then you got um, Settle. Tim Settle. Sorry. So, to me, with Von anchoring that and just being able to stop the run, being able to speed rush, bull rush, and then giving all these other guys one-on-ones practically and with a huge rotation, got to put them number one. But really close behind to me is the Dolphins. Wilkins and Sealer are probably the two best interior defensive linemen, I'd say the best interior defensive linemen in the AFC East. Agba is unbelievable at the edge. And, you know, we run like a 3-4 kind of hybrid, so you got to add in Van Ginkle and Phillips. Phillips had a terrible game yesterday, and that was a bothersome. I got to really, I can't really add him into the mix right now because he had such a bad game yesterday. Van Ginkle, he's kind of limited, but really good at some of the things he does. Uh, Davis, he got injured again. He was in there and then kind of disappeared. I don't know if it was the knee or whatever. But as much as I like that front, and, you know, you had Ingram and Flowers we haven't seen, there's a lot of depth there. There's some high-point talent. But Von Miller is Hall of Fame. And so I got to give it to the Bills. We're really close behind with the Dolphins. And then Pats. You know, the Pats... Judon had a good game yesterday, and he's a good player, man. God shall, he, he, he'd be pretty good, you know. Uh, guy, he could be pretty good. Barrymore, uh, ba- ba- Barrymore, Barrymore, I can't remember. He's developing. I didn't really see any of these guys super pop, but they had some nice moments. Some of them dominated Eichenberg. Some of them even sometimes dominated Hunt, certainly Jackson. So there was moments, but they don't have nearly the same level of talent as the Dolphins. Obviously not the same talent as the Bills. And the Jets, they got Myers, Lawson, Quinn and Williams, talent. But they're, you know, they're not even, they're not to the Patriots level. Obviously Jets or the Dolphins. And so that would be my four. And I think it's clear that the Dolphins and the Bills are a separate group. Patriots are kind of really set themselves in the middle and, uh, Jets kind of down there. Their rookie, Jermaine Johnson the second, really, I didn't even see him yesterday. So that would be my layout. Now, defensive backs was even tighter. And I, I think that there's multiple ways to look at this. Bills, I gave them a little bit of edge because Hyde and Poyer, are elite at the top. Holland is going to fall into their grouping at some point, and he's getting real close. And I like Rowe and Brandon Jones. He made so many plays yesterday. And so that, that safety group was back and forth, but the experience 
and the history I had to give to the Bills. And then, you know, you look at the Patriots, they got Duggar, McCourty, and Phillips. I really couldn't, I couldn't come to who was best. Jets, obviously, in the background, they have a, a whitehead. You know, he's good, but these three teams are, I, I kept going around in circles. So I kind of started to try to focus on the cornerback groups. And, you know, when you look at the cornerback groups, Dolphins have Howard. And, I mean, he's by far the biggest playmaker, without a doubt. But then you balance it out, you got Trey White, and then the Dolphins, they've got Nick Needham, and then uh, the Bills also got Johnson, who's a better nickel than, than Needham, and, you know, Brandon Jones for the Dolphins, you know, he's pretty good, but injury history, Kohu, we saw he could be a, a, a Nick Needham type, but then you look at Benford and Elam, and so I was going back and forth. I put the Bills there just because of the history, and then I put the Dolphins there because Howard and Holland are really high point talents, and they got a lot of depth with Jones and Rowe, and Trey White's out, but then so Brandon Jones are out, so you can kind of go either way with these two teams, and I really like the Patriots. And I was even trying to starting to see them come up there because if you look what the Patriots did yesterday to the Dolphins with Waddle and, and, and with Hill, they were able to contain all these guys. And guys like uh, Jack Jones and Jonathan Jones, along, you know, like I said, with Phillips McCourty, Duggar, and, and Mills at corner, they had an admirable job. And I could see these guys rising as a season. People were saying, oh, well, you know, Patriots lost uh, a top cornerback, and it's going to suck. They didn't. I mean, the suck was all on the offense. You know, some faux pas by penalties and stuff. But that secondary really played well. There were some big gaffes, but considering what they were going up against, I don't know. But they're, to me, they're in third. And then when I watched the Jets game, and uh, I'll tell you, uh, Sauce Gardner wasn't tested almost all day. I mean, he might have been maybe missed something. I don't. I, without all 22, I can't tell how great this guy was playing or how bad or whatever. They, but they weren't testing him. They weren't testing him at all. They uh, 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 Reed was getting tested a lot, but he played pretty well. You know, he got beat, I think, once or twice, but he played really well. Then you got Whitehead at the top. So there's some talent there, especially if Sauce comes out to be a superstar along with Reed. These guys might have the two best cornerbacks in the division, but we'll see. But you still got to put them at the bottom right now. So to me, it's the Dolphins, Bills back and forth. I just like what I've seen as far as the longstanding production and history from the Bills. Although Howard, you saw what he did yesterday. And you saw Holland, what he did yesterday. And you saw, you know, Kohu stepping up, which is a real nice thing. And we didn't have Rowe, but still, take it as you want. So it'll be Bills, Dolphins, Patriots, and then the Jets. And then last is wide receiver. And this, I thought, was very difficult, but it ended up being pretty clear to me. To me, I had to put the Dolphins. Hill, Walters, games. I mean, defense is puck of air, cheeks up when he comes to the line of scrimmage. And you can see Waddle, he's doing that too. Now, we don't know what the deal is, why they weren't coming together. I think maybe they're trying to ease Waddle in and that quad, you know, but then you add Cedric Wilson, and then you add uh, Izu Kanma, who this guy looks like he's going to develop, but we don't know. We'll see. You know, Sherfield, you know, these guys, maybes. But Hill matches with Diggs. Waddle is into that level of Davis. And as much as I like Crowder, McKenzie, and Shakir, Cedric Wilson is just a much higher point than these guys. And so while I like the depth a little bit better with the Bills, I think the high point in talent, game-changing talent and accumulation has to go to the Dolphins. I put the Dolphins, I put the Bills, and the Patriots I still like. You know, people are kind of, I don't think, if you go back and watch that game, these guys were getting open against Needham. The ball wasn't getting there. The plays, I don't think, were really designed as well as I had seen in the past. But 
Bourne, Aguilar, Myers, uh, Parker, and then you add Hunter in if you want to add that in. They're into that category of being really deep and well-rounded. They just don't have the high-point talent, game-changing talent of Bills and the Dolphins. So I put them in third. And then, you know, Garrett Wilson looked pretty good. He started to show some stuff. And uh, what's his name? What's the other little guy's name? Berrios, he popped a little bit. Davis popped a little bit. And there's a core there that I could see rising. But at this point, they're not better than the Patriots. And obviously not better than the other two. And so that's how I'd have it. Dolphins, Bills, Patriots, and then potential, but back end the Jets. And so if you look at it right now, the Dolphins, I got to be positive here. Dolphins are number one in a division with a division upon victory tied with the Bills. Of course, the Bills beat Super Bowl champions, and we're going to meet in two weeks, and then we'll get to solve that. But statistically speaking, it's the Dolphins, Bills, and then at the bottom would be the Patriots, and the Jets would be just above them because they didn't lose the division opponent. But I think, really, Bills are clearly the number one team in the division at this stage. Injuries and, and you really change stuff. And, you know, fluke losses and... There's a lot of stuff that can happen along the way. It would take a lot for the Bills to <laughs> come down to the pack. But Bills are clearly the most talented. They've got the best assets as far as run game, pass rush, and quarterback. Dolphins, though, they have a really good collection, but that offensive line is a major concern. Even though they are technically in first or tied in first, they, you know, that offensive line concerns me. It's a heavy weight. This Raven game and this Bills game is going to really tell us, like, beating the Patriots was a floor estimation, evaluation. This Ravens game and Bills game is going to tell us about the ceiling. And that, to me, it's all about this offensive line. So I think the Dolphins are better than the Patriots at the moment. But the Patriots have a better offensive line. They have a run game. And as it gets nastier, I mean, Mac being out for a long period of time could cripple the 2022 campaign for the Patriots, given how tough this schedule is. But we'll see. I don't count them out, but they are in a bit of a hole in a few regards. Jets, I mean, they just got to prove to be feisty this year. Wilson's got to come in and show that he can do something, you know. And then I think... The 2022 uh, three season for the Jets could be looking brighter in 2024 because they would be definitely trending up. But they've got to prove to be feisty and they've got to prove that Wilson isn't a total bust and, and, and can actually get to that 7 out of 10 at the very least. More than that would be great. So, Bill's clear to the top. Dolphins, I think they're in a strong second place. Patriots trying to rise up again. Jets clearly at the bottom. And that's where it is, I think, after week one. We'll see. Things change quick. You got to keep your head on a swivel in the NFL. We'll see. Anyway, hope you enjoyed. This is Curtis saying, thanks for coming by. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Catch you next time. Hope you had a great week one. Week two looks to be just as good. Start building your own online sports book today by getting signed up with AceBread.com service that allow you to book action on sports from all around the world.